Dan Larson here back at the photo booth with a bunch of stuff that we got in the mail sent in by viewers like you. Up first is Captain Video from... But there's no from here, it's just Captain Video. Cap says he loves the channel so much, this channel, Toy Galaxy. He loves Toy Galaxy so much it inspired him to set up his own channel. Uh, he's doing some toy reviews and toy-related essays and stuff here. Uh, Captain Video on YouTube. Um, he sent in the uh, mint on card here, Funko Scorpion figure uh, from Mortal Kombat. Uh, it, it's mint on card in, in that it is unopened on card. Uh, this card's not mint condition or anything. Uh, and if you notice here... Unfortunately, his hip is busted off there, uh, but uh, it's still uh, it's still a pretty neat figure. I, I have to say that uh, as far as the Mortal Kombat designs go, Scorpion is my favorite uh, of all time from back in the day when the game first came out. Uh, Scorpion is absolutely by far my favorite character to play as. Uh, I do prefer that original suit. Something about the charm of just the basic regular costume as opposed to, you know, this era when, when just you, you get all these little... Accoutrements and all the little straps and details and stuff. It's like, it's it's still just the basic. You know, it's the yellow and the black ninja suit. And I've always preferred that suit. I know I know things have to change and evolve and uh, over time and stuff. It just it seems like it's more detailed for for detail's sake, uh, as opposed to being as as iconically uh, striking as the original suit was. Uh, Cap also sent in the mint on card, uh, Spider Ham Hot Wheels. Van? Uh, it's, it's the Vanster. It's the Hamster Vanster uh, from Into the Spider-Verse. I saw it. I loved it. Uh, I don't know if it's going to win some Oscars or whatever. I hope it does. That'd be great. Uh, I thoroughly enjoyed it. Was glad to see the ham getting some respect, finally. Uh, although I have to say, if, if I'm being totally honest, I'm still not 100% sold on this version of the ham. But I do know that uh, the Spider-Verse is infinite. Infinite. And that somewhere, the Mark Armstrong version of Spider-Ham, which is the one I really love, that design, uh, that still exists somewhere out there. In Hamland, across the Hamverse, uh, and maybe we'll get to see that version at some point, too. But if we don't, still cool. That's cool. The Marvel Legends figure was cool, too. It's all good. Thanks, Captain Video, for sending that stuff in. Uh, after that, we've got Seth from Shreveport, uh, Louisiana. I almost said L.A. Uh, he's also Simo Wilkins. I don't know if that's how it's pronounced. Uh, on Instagram. Seth sent in a uh, Robot Spirits uh, Turn A Gundam, which I, I think that's how it's pronounced. I'll be honest, this is one uh, this is one of those Gundams that I've, I don't know much about, and that goes for like 99% of them. I pretty much know the first era, and then the like uh, second era, and then a few others, uh, Wing, whatever. But uh, I think this one started as a prequel. I didn't do my research before I started this. I think this one started, uh, originally it was going to be a prequel, but I think now it exists in the sort of alternate timeline. Uh, I don't know for sure, but uh, it's a little it's a little uh, out there uh, as far as the regular Gundam stuff goes. Uh, and I, it's not it's not my favorite favorite because, whoops, the uh, design elements, and it's not even all the design elements. It's this. It's this right here. It's moving that... Uh, brow, the the victory V em emblem from the brow down to the mustache part of his face. Uh, I don't know, man. It just it turns that whole Gundam aesthetic upside down for me, and I, I really, really have a problem. It feels a little more buggish to me, a little, and I think that fits with, if you've seen any of the Turn A Gundam stuff, uh, it fits with that, but it just feels weird as a Gundam figure. That said, I, I have been... Uh, I, want to get into Robot Spirits figures. It's uh, it's pretty much the only line of Gundam figures that I have no representation for in my collection. Um, I have two Robot Spirits figures, uh, but they're both from the most recent uh, Pacific Rim movie uh, when they were, uh, tw you know, 20 bucks for a Pacific Rim uh, Robot Spirits figure. I'm not going to say no to that, so I bought two of those. Um, so I was, I've been very curious to get into that. There's a couple of shops around me that have some robot spirits, but they're pushing like 70, 80 bucks and I can't get into that at that price. So I'm hoping I would like to get just, you know, regular grandpa, you know, RX 78, you know, Gundam robot spirits figures, and maybe a couple others of the designs that I'm particularly interested in. Uh, but it was really great to, to, to receive this from Seth and have a good look at that and see what, to, I mean, crazy accessories and stuff and posability. So that's really cool. Also from Seth was this, uh, Coneheads seeker set back here. Which, uh, hopefully you can see. You know what, just to make this easier, hang on. Uh, these are just little vinyl figures from uh, Loyal Subjects. Uh, but obviously the reason he sent them in... Uh, whoop! There we go. Was the uh, translucent nature of them. I don't know if that's their default. Man, all these hips are falling apart. There they all go. Hang on. There we go. 
These guys do not snap together well. But uh, that's uh, Thrust, Ramjet, and uh, what's his face? Uh, all right, very good. Uh, and those guys are all translucent. I'm going to have to spend a, a few minutes putting these guys together a little bit better so that they can uh, stand up on the shelf all right. Uh, but those guys are cool. Uh, Seth also sent in uh, the other Gundam stuff that you can see in the booth here, now that I've made a mess of things. From the line called uh, Universal Unit, which I was not familiar with uh, until I was putting the stuff together for this video, which uh, appears to just be a batch of blind bag, or blind box rather, uh, Gundam figures. Hang on, there's one more here. Over here. There we go. Uh, and and I say I say I'm not familiar with them, but I think I actually do already own a couple of these that uh, another viewer sent in at one point uh, Here we have uh, the Gundam Forgive me if I don't know the pronunciation. It's either Barbatos or Barbatos the lupus version. We have uh, GM custom uh, with the beam saber and shield variant and then we have a uh, uh, Gundam X here, and this is actually from another line called Assault Kingdom. It's this Shining Gundam. Um, two lines that I was not familiar with, blind boxes. Uh, they're just like little model kit figures, and they are super detailed. <laughs> they're just as detailed uh, as most 6, 8, 10, 12 inch figures. Maybe not that detailed, uh, but they're super posable, and they've got, you know, wrists and bicep swivels and waists, and uh, they're just as good as uh, the old uh, Bandai... Um, Gundam figures from back in the 90s and into the early 2000s, uh, that whole batch of stuff. I love them, and this has introduced me to several designs that I wasn't even really that familiar with. Um, obviously, uh, you know, Gundam X I don't really know that much about, but after taking a look at this figure, I was like, okay, that's something I'm going to take a look into. Um, but uh, the bad part <laughs> is that I really like the scale, I really like the detail on these, and, you know, just like collecting anything, once you get one, you get two, you get four, and now you're like, ah, I need the whole set. So, uh, just like with uh, Robot Spirits, I'm going to have to track down a couple more of these guys, especially just, you know, the key the key suits th that you, you like the most, the ones that have really resonated with you over the years. Uh, for me, it's going to be those original, you know, five or six designs, uh, and then the few that just jump out uh, here and there over the various series, just the ones that happen to catch your eye uh, and whatever. But uh, Seth also sent in this guy. I have no idea what this is, no idea what it's from. If you know, tell me down below. Uh, I think he glows in the dark, just a little dragon guy with a blade on his head. It's got a little baby blade-headed dragon thing on his tail. It's cute. It's a thing. Thanks, Seth. Say, thanks for sending all that stuff in. Thomas from Vallejo, California, uh, said he's working on narrowing the focus of his collection and knew that, uh, well, rather hoped, that uh, this figure, this translucent orange lantern Lex Luthor, uh, would have a better place in the Toy Galaxy collection as opposed to his collection. Um, you know, battling it out. He's, he's seen our previous videos. He knows I've got a, uh, a translucent green lantern in my collection now, so they're going to they're gonna pit... You know, he said battling it out, but I don't know if they'd actually fight. I, I think uh, the whole war of the, the color spectrum of the rings there... Uh, I feel like they were all on the same team, but uh, it's still, it's Lex, it's it's Hal, they're going to fight at some point. Uh, and as uh, as uh, Thomas said in his note, uh, this is what would, what it would look like if Tang became a supervillain, and I got to agree with him there. Uh, my only complaint with this line, this isn't from the DCUC line, uh, and I think DCUC did do the Orange Lantern Lex Luthor. My only complaint, this is from DC Collectibles. It's got all the regular articulation that you would expect, uh, except the hips only go front and back. They don't go side to side, and that's really frustrating. And that's really that's one thing that has stopped me from picking up a lot of DC Collectibles figures uh, is that uh, is that hip joint that just doesn't open up because they usually have more detail than the DCUC ones, and you think that in general they'd be better figures, and they probably would be if they could just add that single point of articulation, technically two points of articulation, uh, but that would be a lot better. Shane from Boise, Idaho, sent in the. Episode Episode one, uh, back here in the back. Shane sent in the uh, episode one deluxe collection, Obi Wan, and also sent in Qui Gon too. I used to have this entire line of figures when it was being released. Um, that was back during the real return of Star Wars, back for the prequels. I mean, every single thing that came out, I bought. It's three and three quarter inch figures like these over here, 12 inch figures, every single thing I bought. And I bought multiple uh, multiple samples of each, maybe not the 12 inch ones, but I had all the 12 inch figures. They were on, 
every, every single shelf in, in my apartment at the time was just filled with figures. The dewback was on top of my fridge. The biker scouts were on top of my fridge. These guys were all over my shelves, whatever. Uh, and then I sold them off uh, several years ago when I had to uh, get rid of Collection 1.0 and move on to Collection... Sorry, when I was getting rid of Collection 2.0, moving on to Collection 3.0, uh, I had to uh, scale back on a lot of that stuff. But... In recent times, I have been picking up a few more of these uh, 12-inch figures. At the very least, I wanted to get all the bounty hunters back. Uh, I'm still missing pretty much the entire squad there. But uh, I, I always dug these figures. I thought they were. I thought I thought Hasbro. Uh, I think they were still going under the Kenner name at this time. Nope, Hasbro. I thought they were delivering more than expected. You know, I thought for the price point. These were really detailed figures. The likenesses were all pretty good. Uh, my only complaint with them is my still my complaint to this day is they really, really, really just shorted the arms, which may, and they have these monstrously large hands and just made them look, I don't know, just disproportionate. So most of the time I would try to find ways to pose them so that they, uh, you know, you weren't seeing what the real length of their arms was. Uh, and that would help make them look a little bit better. Uh, also in here from Shane, we have these applause figures, which uh, applause is just a company that was doing like vinyl figures, basically cashing in on that that Star Wars mania. Uh, so here we've got Darth Vader and a and well, it, at at first glance it appears to be a stormtrooper, uh, but it's actually uh, a man. Oh wait, no, that's Han Solo. It's Han Solo as stormtrooper <laughs> with his helmet that fits about as well as they fit in the movie. So that's actually. That's actually pretty screen accurate. What I don't know is what's going on with these poses. Whoops. This is Darth Vader with removable helmet, apparently. And he has a cloth cape, so that's a, a point of detail there. But man, look at this. He's like super narrow. Uh, I'm surprised the amount of pain application he actually does have. But this, the you know, two two points of articulation. Yeah, he's got the choke the choke fingers out. That's good. And then he's just got his his harumph uh, arm at his side with his fist. And then uh, Han Solo here has. Uh, I don't know. He's like, what, what do you want me to do with this? What you, there's nothing there. And then he's got his blaster out. He's not, he can't hold it. So I don't, I don't know. I don't know what moment this is supposed to be recreating. Good enough, I guess. Those are fun. Those will make for good uh, background decorations. Um, Shane also sent in uh, these action fleet pieces here. Uh, when they originally released these vehicles, it would, it would have just been the ad at by itself. Uh, and then later on, to, to get a little bit more run out of the line and the molds that previously existed, uh, they released a two-pack, which was a con uh, concept art version. So you'd get the little Ralph McQuarrie or whoever did the specific uh, vehicle designs here. You'd get the concept art version, uh, a little non-posable version of it, uh, along with the actual regular version that had already been released. But And in some cases, it would have a little bit more paint deco on it. In other cases, I think this one came with a different figure... So you have the at, at driver here. What are the odds we can focus on this? Zero. Oh, there we go. Um, I don't know if this is an actual repaint. I'll have to look it up and see if this is the actual genuine repaint of it. Because when I opened this up and saw it, I was like, oh, let's see if the repainted uh, at, at driver's in there. I thought, oh my gosh, this guy looks like Matt Tracker. <laughs> I never noticed that before. And that's really cool. So I was thinking like, oh, maybe, maybe that's a custom paint job. And that's not what it actually looked like. But I think it is. Anyway... This is the two pack. This would have come packaged together in the same box. They did it with, uh, I think they did it with the X Wing, the Ad At, the Snow Speeder, a couple of the other vehicles. Um, also, back here, we've got the uh, Rebel Troop Transport, which this is one I never had. Uh, I, I loved Action Fleet from Galoob, uh, and I had pretty much everything in the collection. Uh, I don't recall ever seeing this one, and I guess this just pops off like that. And there's stuff in here and guns and things. But that's pretty cool. I'll have to see. There's a whole... Uh, Seth sent in some other stuff. Excuse me, not Seth. Shane. Shane sent in some other stuff. And there was definitely some other small vehicles and figures and whatever. I'll have to see if there's other pieces that go with that. In the bag of stuff that was included with that uh, as well. And then lastly, uh, from, from Shane, I did want to talk about the Star Wars Com ComTech chip reader. Uh, it, for two reasons. One, I know that producer Greg loves to point out that this is actually based on the uh, Gillette uh, Gillette for Women Sensor Excel Razor, and that's funny because you know here you have you know that razor is actually about this big, and so the prop was designed after this, 
and it's it's funny because you know it's not the first time in movie history that like a prop has been based on an actual existing item but i gotta imagine that the process went you know the prop department needed to come up with a jedi communicator thing somebody liked the shape and the the feel and the size of that razor handle and they glued a bunch of greeblies and stuff to it and they got this basic shape Never thinking ahead that, oh, at some point, you know, Hasbro might want to make a toy out of this. And that when they make the toy, they're essentially just going to be making a giant Gillette razor. <laughs> and like, I mean, even this like wavy sort of grooved pattern here uh, is is taken right off the, the design for the razor. You know, this sort of swoop design and everything. It's just funny. Bear with me. It's it's a funny thing. Uh, but it, so this was a this was actually a pretty interesting gimmick for the time. It's got. It's got some. Sound effects. At last, we will have revenge. Uh, I don't know. These buttons aren't working real great right now. But uh, the whole idea was that these each figure came with a stand, a Comtech chip, uh, and you could put it over here. May the force be with you. Feel, don't think. Use your instincts. Sounds exactly like Liam Neeson. I can well become a Jedi. I promise you. And you know every figure came. It's a great, it's a great gimmick. Do not defy the council master, not again. I have a bad feeling about this. Yeah, you know some of them sound better than others. Hang on, let me try. To, Darth, Darth Maul is absolutely terrible here. Wrap it up, Obi Wan. Let's go. Can move the show along. At last, we will have revenge. Like they weren't even trying on that one. <laughs> Not even close. So I, I don't know what the deal was there as far as why Obi Wan and Anakin were uh, Anakin Obi Wan and Qui Gon were actually uh, pretty close to the actual actors' voices, and Darth Maul was just like, ah, give him the robot voice. Who cares? Uh, but that's that's what happens, and and there you go. So uh, an interesting gimmick, and there's like you know dozens of these chips and whatever. Uh, I do think back and say, you know, would the figures been even cheaper if they had sort of just get rid of the gimmick, you know, the people want the figures, they don't want the gimmick, uh, would it have been cheaper, would you have sold more, who knows, they they didn't have any problems selling, spoiler alert, they didn't have any problems selling lots of those figures to people like me, uh, oh, and then uh, also uh, these guys, all, all these Star Wars figures that were in frame here, these were all from Shane, uh, this Boba Fett, oh god, this era of <laughs> figures. Uh, everybody was just nuts. Everybody was nuts over Star Wars figures. And nobody wanted to miss out on the potential investment value of Star Wars figures making a comeback because they had been so big the first time. And at that point, uh, all of the kids who were kids then were adults now that had money. And we're starting to buy this stuff back up, and every figure was just starting to go for stupid money. So everybody was like, oh, of course these are going to be just as expensive. And, you know, you end up with a figure like this, and everybody's tracking down, like, does he have whole circles? Does he have half circles on his hands? Which version is it? Variants. Variants down to, like, the serial numbers on the packaging. It was absolutely nuts, and I'm so glad that none of that matters at this point anymore. So sorry to people who had to chase all that stuff. I didn't bother. I got the one, and I was like, I'm just, I'm happy that I got the one. That's all I ever needed was just one Boba Fett figure. Um, thanks again to Shane for sending all that stuff in. Uh, Jason from Milford, Connecticut. He is Moxie Monocle on Instagram. Uh, he sent in the Shoto Rider Series figures here. We got uh, Super One and, well, I don't have the box out here, but it's uh, d Double, uh oh, I better get the box because I can't remember. Double Joker something here on this guy. Um, oh, here it is. It's sitting right next to me. Double. Double Cyclone Joker. Um, I don't know much about... Uh, I've been reading. I've been doing my reading. Uh, I haven't had a chance to go back and watch any Kamen Rider stuff yet. Um, I've watched... When I lived in Japan back in the early 80s, uh, Super 1 had just hit the airwaves. Uh, so that that was my first exposure to Kamen Rider. And at the time, there was only like five, six riders or something uh, in existence. So there was, wasn't really much to, to, to choose from at the time. It was just like, this is Kamen Rider. That's it. This guy didn't even exist yet. Um, oh, this guy was also in here. This is from the uh, Yudo line. That's uh, P Pata Ranger, I think. Pata Ranger versus Lupin Ranger. Uh, the most recent. So that's the 2018 series of Sentai. Different line. These are actually better figures here. This is more like a model kit. Kind of lightweight. Uh, but these are awesome. And I don't know what it is about... Like, I like the the common Rider designs, for the most part, they start to get a little crazy in recent years. Uh, but something about them being scaled to here makes me really like them. I just, I don't know if it's the solidness of these figures, the posability at this scale, the amount of detail they put on them. I don't know what it is. I'm in love with these figures, and I gotta go get the whole set. Uh, so I have double, double Cyclone Joker, 
Super One, and then in a previous video, uh, one of you sent in. It's either Master, it's either Common Rider One or Common Rider Two. I can't remember which one it is, but I've got three now, and I want like all of them. And I, I don't, I don't. eBay, tell me where I'm getting them. Who, who of the people who are familiar with these? Let me know in the comments where the best place to pick these up are, uh, because it's not something I'm just going to find like walking into a store or something. It's either going to be eBay or Amazon or something like that. You let you let me know. Anyway. Uh, thanks a lot, Jason, for sending those in because I absolutely love those. Um, up next is... I lost my place in my notes. Uh, up next is uh, Stephen from Winston-Salem, North Carolina. We have uh, the Toy Biz Mojo. I, I don't think it's a stretch to say that this is one of the best Mojo figures that's ever been created, given that there's only like two Mojo figures in existence. <laughs> I think it's just this one and the Marvel Legends Build-A-Figure, the Toy Biz Marvel Legends Build-A-Figure, which uh, has super butt gut uh, on his... On his tummy there way too much detail on a figure like that i'm, I'm also going to guess that art adams uh, designed both figures since uh, he created the character he's done a lot of toy designs and why not just give him the money have him design the own, his his own figures this one's pretty cool uh it's got all the you know for the time i mean this is incredibly detailed he's got actually pretty good articulation in his arms he's got the tail that like to the scorpion tail that like attacks and then he's got all his arms and legs and stuff and uh it uh i this you know it, it was a great line. <laughs> this is like all Rob Liefeld stuff. Uh, it was a great line for the time. I absolutely loved collecting this line back in the day. You just they, they couldn't put them out fast enough for me. The price point was right. The style was right. The accessories were right. It was just, it was a great time to be collecting action figures. And I went all in and got every single thing that came out. Uh, and then even as they started to to branch off into Fantastic Four cartoons, Spider-Man cartoons, I was still buying them all. And that's... That was Collection 2.0, and that's when things got out of hand. But that's cool. I'm probably, I'm probably going to leave... I know I'm an opener. I'm probably going to leave that one in the package because I do like it uh, in that uh, particular presentation. Uh, so thank you very much, uh, Stephen, for sending that one in. Haji from uh, Atlanta, Georgia. Haji... i got to move some stuff out of the way here. In the back, we got Optimus. This is the... I think these were Toys R Us exclusives. We got the Year of the Goat. I think I think currently we're in the Year of the Pig. I think that uh, is happening. I think that New Year's is happening like right now, if I'm not mistaken. Chinese New Year. Um, this is the Year of the Goat special edition. Like I said, I think these were Toys R Us exclusives. Uh, you got a flap on the front here showing the figure. I don't remember which line this Optimus is from. Excuse me. Uh, I should have looked it up beforehand. I was not collecting Transformers when this particular Optimus got released. Um, obviously, Haji knew I would be interested in this uh, because this is a translucent version of Optimus Prime. Uh, actually, that's not a very good picture on the back. All right, well, great. I should have opened that. Um, it's uh, translucent, translucent weapons, all that stuff. And uh, that's uh, either way, it's not an Optimus Prime that I had in my collection, but to have a translucent version is amazing. <laughs> and the other crazy thing is that uh, Haji, knowing that uh, that that wasn't enough, I guess. Uh, decided to also uh, hook me up with the uh, sound wave from the same line, the Year of the Goat. This is the Masterpiece. This is ridiculous. I can't even believe he sent this in. Masterpiece, Year of the Goat, sound wave, translucent. And as soon as I saw the box, I was like, oh, shoot, that means translucent cassettes. And sure enough, because it's the same exact set as the Masterpiece sound wave, which I already have. Uh, but yeah, translucent uh, laser beak, buzzsaw, r rumble, frenzy, ravage, crazy, crazy, crazy. Uh, it's it's ridiculous. It's absolutely ridiculous. I, I, I like translucent figures. I like Soundwave, and this is just absolutely nuts to see to have a piece like this in my collection, uh, knowing that it wasn't something that I had picked up myself. You know, this figure came out 2015. That was the year we started the show. Uh, we started in April of 2015, and. Uh, I think, yeah, I did these come, I have to look it up. I'm not sure if this came out the exact same year as regular Masterpiece Soundwave. I'll bet this was the following year. I'll bet Masterpiece Soundwave was the year before. Um, but this is ridiculous. And I, when you talk about like G1 especially, the cassettes and Soundwave have always been my favorite. And I just, to have a translucent figure like that in my collection, all I can say, Haji, is thank you very much for sending both of that, those in. That's absolutely insane, and I love it. Uh, thank you to Captain Video, Seth, Thomas, Shane, Jason, Steven, Haji. Thank you for watching this and all of our videos. Hit like, hit subscribe. Check out our Patreon if you're in the position to help the channel grow. Thank you very much. Later.